Hi, everybody. Rad Mom here. Just your friendly local radical feminist here to break down culture and politics from the too often neglected perspective of middle-aged motherhood. Welcome or welcome back to The Garden, my happy place to talk about scary things. Today on Garden Chat, we have Little Light Studios, but don't let this innocent song reference fool you. These people mean business. And they're seemingly well-funded. They're just one of many Christian film studios out there these days. But they are the only ones I've seen taking this fundamentalism-based censorship to its logical conclusion. The only ones I've seen saying the quiet part out loud. On this episode of their podcast, they explain to us exactly why every single tech-loving citizen of this world ought to be concerned about stuff like this. There are a lot of people, actors specifically, that really invite spirits to come in and help them act, or the methods that they're using is really opening themselves up to to this kind of demonic possession. Find out on this episode of LED Live. Light exposing darkness. Very ministry specializing in this message that popular media is evil. So of course you ought to buy theirs instead. I went and took a look at their website and it's Pretty interesting stuff. While the gospel is free, production is not. We are committed to giving away as much of our content as possible, but we need, but we need your help. Let's bring the light to those who walk in darkness. Let's show them Jesus. This from their testimonial section. To me, these were just movies and entertainment. Now I see all the hidden messages that are meant to keep us away. Thank you for opening my eyes. This holier-than-thou vibe is so off-putting. And it seems to me, if they had their way, we'd all be living in darkness. You don't think this only applies to artistic inspiration, do you? Oh no, that's just a warm, cozy, touchy-feely tip of this unsettling iceberg. Little Light Studios is a 501c3 nonprofit organization, which means that all of this fear-mongering fueled grifting is tax-exempt. The categories to qualify as a charitable organization under 501c3 are... Religious, educational, scientific, literary, testing for public safety, fostering amateur sports competition, and preventing cruelty to children or animals. That's a lot. I guess this whole helping people make healthy media choices thing sounds sort of educational, I guess. The website is a little subtle about the agenda at play here. But this is clearly a religious organization dedicated to helping people make approved media choices. Holy media choices. In line with their views of the world. And they have their eye on so much more than just pop culture. When I did Malcolm X, I would just pray every morning, you know, before I came out of that trailer. I was like, Malcolm, come on. So here we have Denzel Washington and Spike Lee discussing the making of the film Malcolm X. You know, because it's not for me, right? You know, it's, it's just, it's for him and for those, hopefully, that, 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 that he affected. Wow, this is wow. like gold. Man. Deep, dude. <laughs> and it's them saying it. That's yeah. deep. That's, not us. That's the deep, mouth. dude. But what are they saying? Come on, Malcolm, mm. come into me so I can act this. Dude, these spirits are messing with these guys. Yeah. Mm. Talk and about he's coming idols. from a good place, yeah. Mm. He's wanting to represent him and represent the culture in the best yeah. way he can. Which is exactly what happened. And it's just, but he's praying to something. Mm. Inviting that to spirit invite it in. in. I like that, to something, so it's not right. actually Malcolm. Right. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Not a dog. Yeah. No, I don't think he's actually channeling Malcolm X either, okay, for the record. <laughs> and there were many times in that film where we all had to pinch ourselves because we thought we saw the reincarnation right, right. of Malcolm. It wasn't about impersonation, right. you know, how to capture the spirit. The spirit and just trying to, you know, act as well, I'm going to look like him and that, but right, that's, right. that's just surface stuff. You see a performance from a particular actor and it is powerful. Yeah. You're just like, that, that, that was so amazing. Mm -hmm. But you got to think, man, there's some demonic forces mm -hmm. working through these people. Even if you believe in demons, I don't think this is evidence of that. Just, just take this little journey with me here. You set yourself an intention. You set yourself a goal. And then you go into a little trance. And then you achieve your goal. What exactly is demonic about that? Wow. that un they, they, were, they were alive when Malcolm X was there. They, that demon probably saw firsthand mm -hmm. the way Malcolm X acted, and he's acting through, you know, Denzel. <laughs> so if Denzel won any awards for this performance, it should have gone to the demon. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Which is more far-fetched? The idea that he's channeling a demon who knew Malcolm X or the idea that Denzel Washington was just really, really familiar with that material and with that person, with that persona. It's literally the man's job. Malcolm X really wasn't hard because I had done the play. Right. She gets him home the roof. Right? Yeah, so I felt comfortable that I could do it. And, you know, I got the gift of gab anyway. Mm -hmm. So I was cutting and pasting his speeches. And there's our explanation. Up to an acting discipline that you've referred to as nouveau shamanic. Is, right. that, is that correct? Yeah. What they had so many fun clips in this, and I'm not going to be able to show you most of them. I'm going to have to take out a couple. They tried to copyright claim the video. <laughs> but some of these are really fun. This is Nicolas Cage, who anybody who doesn't know that, his real name is Coppola. His uncle is Francis Ford Coppola. So Nicolas Cage is the most California man, I think, maybe who ever lived. What are the core principles? I've been told that um, all actors really hail from the early medicine men and the, and the shamans in the villages pre-Christianity where they would put on masks and, and act out and, and really what, they were probably pretty crazy, but they would go in and find answers to questions. Today you're called psychotic if you do that. Or possessed. It all depends on who you ask. But it's all, it's all uh, semantics. So what I would do is I'd put on Afro-Caribbean paint, like a white and black paint, and black out my eyes so I look like this sort of Afro-Caribbean voodoo icon. And then I would sew in bits of uh, Egyptian artifacts that were thousands of years old into my costume and gather some onyx or tourmaline or something that was meant to have vibrations. And who knows if it works or doesn't, but for me it was an idea of like trying to stimulate my, my mind or trick my mind into believing I was this this character from another dimension and that's exactly what he did it's called self-hypnosis and I would walk on the set and then wouldn't speak to anybody wouldn't say a word so I projected this aura of uh, horror which created fear in my fellow actors which then inspired me to believe I really was this character Exciting. I'd love to be on set with you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> he was feeding off of wow. his fear. But you think of also he's taking real shamanic artifacts mm -hmm. putting them I mean, you don't see that in the movie you don't know yeah. that something's sewn yeah. into the inside of his, of his thing <laughs> yeah you also can't see his costumes probably stuck together with pins and duct tape that's movie magic for you oh my god and i think i'm gonna have to cut out jim carrey talking about how the spirit of the grinch possessed him while making that movie which is a damn shame because it's amazing. You might, you might hypothetically channel the spirit of Malcolm X. But nobody's channeling the spirit of the Grinch. I'll give them that. So I'm just going to give you a little play-by-play -play of what it is that Jim Carrey says in this clip. Because I think I have to cut it out. Which is that once he heard he had the part of the Grinch, he entered a fugue state. And after that, what happened was beyond his control. That apparently at one point, the Grinch tapped him on the shoulder and said, I will be making my movie. And then afterwards, he was embarrassed because he lost control again. But control of what? Apparently, belief in the unconscious mind is somewhat controversial in certain circles. But I don't know how else you explain this. How else do you explain the human mind? And I think that a lot of the supposed demons of our past that have haunted us, you know, turned out to be gremlins of the unconscious mind. And that's what these people are tapping into. You'll always hear them say, oh, I couldn't have done that. I couldn't have done that. But you did. We all saw it. Why does this have to be the result of tapping into some external force? Why can't people just have capabilities that they're not aware of? Why, why can't we just think that these actors have a talent for this kind of thing that they've honed to a professional level? When people ask me, who is my role model in this business, I say you, Jack. And here we have Shirley MacLaine, a pillar of Hollywood, giving a speech to Jack Nicholson. Shirley MacLaine is well known for her new age stuff. So, of course, these people love to shit on her. Doing a love scene with, with, with Jack Nicholson is absolute middle-aged bliss. I mean, to lie in bed and rehearse a love scene, it's so funny, it's so spontaneous, it's so open. We're lying in bed and we're rehearsing the astronaut Garrett Breed love scene. He's explaining to Aurora what it was like to walk on the moon. She's loving it. And then we launched into the first take and two voices came out of you. Do you remember this? 
two voices, and they were, they were simultaneous words, but they were two levels of sound. And I looked over at you, you were amazed, I was amazed, and you said, well, sure, sure, oh, I'm, I'm many different people. <laughs> I said, no, Jack, you're channeling. During a love scene, what do you suppose he was channeling, y'all? So they all know exactly what she's talking right. about. That's why they're right. like... because they all talk about that. Mm-hmm. Two they get it. different voices simultaneously. You, mm. I, you is... couldn't try that. Yeah. You cannot produce that. So I've never heard of two voices at once. I think maybe old Jack needed to see a doctor. That's you know like I mean? textbook demonic possession. Yeah. Which textbook is that exactly, hon? I was going to say, I've that actually heard even... of that before, yeah. too. And like, if there's a textbook about demonic possession, what are we even talking about? Why don't we just consult the reference? He says, um, but there is also this thing, it is possession. In the olden days, you'd have been burned for it, but there's something empowering about it. I mean, it's a place where you can be a Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde, where you can actually become this other force. And here's Robin Williams. He probably knew he was going to be on here, right? Mm-hmm. So wow. he was explaining mm-hmm. that acting to him was literally like having something come in, mm-hmm. take possession over you. And, you know, we celebrate it in our world, yeah. whereas in the olden days, you'd have been burning yeah. people. You get awards wonder for it. why they were burning people? I mean, I'm not for them burning people, but you ever wonder why? Like, what they were trying to protect society from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? No. No, I've never wondered that. Ooh. See, see, we're starting to skirt the edge of, yeah, if you follow this shit logically where it goes, it goes to some really scary places really fucking fast. I think that literally we give them access through various different things. In fact, um, there's a guy named John Todd who uh, really um, was big with with the music industry, worked at Capitol Records, and um, they would pray that the demons would go with every single record out. And he says, oh, you want to know how many demons are in your home? Go count your records. (laughs) So the records are possessed now. Again, that's interesting. I've heard of demonic messaging in recordings, but not the records themselves being possessed. This is a new one on me. And that was literally like they knew that the spirits could follow those records and then that gave them access into your home. But so movies are unsafe. Music is unsafe. And it's like, okay, fine. Don't watch movies. Don't listen to music. That's your prerogative. But this shit doesn't stop there. Do you know what the holly is? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It comes from a plant. It comes from mm-hmm. a plant. It's a hollywood, right? Mm-hmm. Holly it is a sacred wood that witches use to make the wands that put people to sleep. And how in the hell do you know about that? All of a sudden you're an expert in witchcraft too? I love this one, personally. He did not say that in past tense, by the way. Let's hear that again. Holly it is a sacred wood that witches use to make the wands that put people to sleep. It is a sacred wood that witches use to make wands to put people to sleep. But we're expected to take these people's criticism seriously about anything. Read read this verse many, many times. Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 12. Mm -hmm. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh the son or daughter pass through the fire or useth divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or or a consulter with familiar spirits, a wizard or necromancer for all that do these things are an abomination to the Lord. Again, that's a lot of stuff. So visionaries are not welcome here. You know, it's just... It's just fascinating to me that, that, you know, the spirit world is interested in entertainment. That is interesting. Why in the hell would the spirit world be interested in entertainment? In Ecclesiastes 9 verse 5, it says, For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. Yes. If you are channeling something, if some spirit is speaking through you or saying that they were some departed loved one or whatever... That is not your loved one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is a demonic entity mm-hmm. that, is, that is speaking through you. Or it's your imagination. Well, so here's the thing, how do, how do we tell the difference? I know there's verses like uh, 1 John 4 and, and verses in Ephesians, because it's not only demons that can tell you things about yourself that you haven't shared, also angels can. 
not immediately familiar with this verse of the Bible. I went and looked this up. And wouldn't you know it, it's pretty straightforward. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. So all you got to do is ask the spirit about Jesus. And if it affirms Jesus, you're all good. This is a very straightforward answer. So the question is like how how even the very if it's, if it's possible even the very elect elect will be deceived. That's right. How could I have known that this is not okay? Unfortunately, our host here seems to be unaware of it as well. That's right. That's right. I think you know in some situations God does wink at our ignorance, but I, I also believe that that you know. <laughs> As best as possible, we should make ourselves aware of these tactics and these tools because yeah. if you have no idea what they are, yeah. it's then easy it's easy it. to fall into it. But you could literally just ask it to affirm Jesus. And if it does, then you're all in the clear, the Bible says. But this guy would rather fear monger than actually answer her question. That, that all spiritualism is the only, only servicing function of it is to literally do something different than what God said. This is how they characterize any amendments to a Bronze Age document. We're all supposed to live by something that's over 2,000 years old and never, ever, ever adjust it or amend it or innovate in any way whatsoever because all dreamers of dreams are excluded from the kingdom of God. Yeah. Yep. That's it. And so what I see in Hollywood is these guys are using spiritualism and, and, and channeling different spirits and stuff. Literally what they're going to be doing is showing you a way of life that's different than what God wants. Medium, of course, you look that up in the dictionary. And here we go with the etymological argument. Get ready. Are you ready? It just means, um, you know, a, a f way to, to communicate using something. Yeah, outside of a spiritualist context, it's a pretty generic word. But it's amazing what you can twist things into when you take them out of context. Um, at the very bottom, uh, it's interesting in the dictionary, it uses uh, the word communication, information, entertainment, newspapers, television as a medium. Yeah. yeah, right? And the plural form of medium is media. <gasps> this is once again where the devil is literally calling it what it is, yeah. and oh it just goodness. goes over the top of the a, channel. Exactly, a media. lot of our, our minds. Ooh, we're so smart. We know the meanings of words, not like all those sheeple out there referring to something as what it is. So that's where I think, you know, we've used this verse probably in everything that we've actually pr pr produced uh, to the law and to the testimony. If it speaks not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. No innovation for you. So if you balance everything against that, there is a day that honestly will be very confusing. Yeah. We know this, that, that something is brewing in the, in, the, in the world stage right now. There's always something brewing on the world stage. You sound like such an idiot right now. And people like this love to leap on that sort of stuff in order to justify their apocalyptic fantasies. Satan is preparing for his final trick, mm -hmm. his final oomph to try to take away the believers of God out of God's fold. That's, that's what the Bible tells us. And the only way that we're going to be able to navigate through this is through standing on the Word of God. Not innovation. Not invention. We don't need to think our way out of this. We just need to trust in the Bible. Right, right. Because biblical fundamentalism has always worked out so well in the past. Amen. We're Second. seeing witchcraft on the rise, lukewarm Christianity on the rise. Oh no, not lukewarm Christianity. Actually, you know, sometimes I feel like I might have a beef with those people because uh, maybe somebody in the broader Christian sphere ought to take on some of this crap. New age blending of Christianity on the rise. I mean, he's, he's preparing the people to accept it. it runs light, right along with Second Thessalonians and Revelation 13. This is Keith. Keith is a bit of an interesting fellow. He's going to quote us kind of a long verse right now. But bear with me. We're almost to the sweet spot. It says in Deuteronomy 13, If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or wonder comes to pass, where he spoke to you, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. You shall not hearken to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proves you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and you shall serve him and cleave unto him 
And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. Death to visionaries. That's quite a position. Because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust you out of the way which the Lord your God commanded you to walk in. So shall you put the evil away from the midst of you. You know, unless they affirm Jesus, in which case we should be all good, right? So it's very, very powerful text saying, you know, just because you get, you know, uh, whether it's a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and I think this has a, a, a bit of an application to, you know, broaden that a little bit. Yeah, he sure does. And talk about people who are mediums or channels or whatever. If they're giving you information and it doesn't line up with the word of God, well, first of all, it already doesn't line up with the word of God. The word of God doesn't line up with the word of God, but I digress. Because they're communicating with, you know, other uh, things that are not godly. Unless they affirm Jesus. And that automatically axes it right there. The Bible says so. It doesn't even matter if what they say comes to pass. Right. It doesn't matter if it's true. The Bible says don't have anything to do with it. Keith is working on a documentary called Channels. You guys will want to hear this like documentary towards the end of the year. I hope that we can get this thing done. And they did. This video is about three years old. They did. Be, they did. They did get the documentary done. And uh, you know, if you got, if enough people subscribe to the channel, maybe I'll take a look at this and do a commentary on it because it sounds absolutely fascinating. But um, it really goes over the the boom of technology in the late 1800s and how spiritualism really was was feeding a, a lot of the things back then but then we see that same thing in the boom of technology of today we see the spiritualism ramping up once again hmm coincidence free thought has certain features one of which is a lessening of adherence to dogma yeah these people are going after technology with the same idea don't watch movies don't listen to popular music fine but you're 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 coming after modern society's bread and butter here you're coming after the thing that feeds millions of people here you're coming after the thing that powers modern civilization all the technological and medical innovations of the last hundred years are apparently on the chopping block here at least and so the reason I wanted to bring this up, what is spiritualism, what is a medium, and, and what is that communication? When the devil used the snake in the Garden of Eden, he was using a medium. Yeah. Cute, right? If you made it this far, please like the video and subscribe to the channel so we can all work together to bring feminism back into the real world because we desperately need it. Thank you so much for joining me out here in the garden today for our little investigation into Little Light Studios and what lurks behind the mask of concern paternalistic fundamentalists often wear. If they had their way, we'd all be living some biblical LARP, leaving out anything else that can ever come from the human imagination. That these people make money doing this is concerning to me and anybody else who values innovation of any kind. Come back at the top of the hour for the live stream where we always keep it lively and next Wednesday at 11 for a brand new video. Thank you so much for hanging with me today and I will see you then. All right, bye. And preserving... <laughs> and preventing... And preventing cruelty to children or animals.